All right, so this is a test for uh, for this new product. Let's see how it works. So let's say we're trying to draw a cylinder, kind of like what you guys are going to be doing this week. Okay, so maybe I start off like this. Just kind of drawing a basic, the ubiquitous cube. Pretty much what we've been doing all along. I'm going to change the proportions just a touch here. Okay, so let's see. We're trying to demonstrate how to draw a draw a cylinder into this ellipse. We've already done this once before, but it doesn't hurt to show it again. Especially as a basic demo, it's a good one. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do both sides because this will actually help me draw the minor axis as well. Because we know the minor axis is going to be shared by the two sides. Now switching to a red pencil to draw the minor axis. The minor axis does recede to this distant VP over here. Now I'm going to sh shift to a blue pencil in order to draw the perpendicular. Oh, actually, let me show you one other thing first. So we've talked about this where Basically, we know that the minor axis has to be within these diagonals. So I'm just, just going to go ahead and pick a spot and say, okay, well, uh, let's make this the length of my minor axis. Now, if I bisect those, you're going to notice that I end up just in front, just by a smidgen, end up just in front of my center of my square, so I'm going to draw a perpendicular line here. And for the, in kind of the same method, you know, I know that I know that my major axes need to be in here. Now I'm going to cheat it just a little bit on this side because this one doesn't have as much room, so I give a little more room there, a little less room there. And that ought to be about right, because now if I bisect them, it should be the same. Okay, so now I'm going to draw my ellipse. And I'm going to go ahead and draw my ellipse in kind of a nice purple here. This is actually the hardest part of working with this medium. Is it doesn't allow you to rotate the page quite the same, so you have to just kind of trust your arm, trust the hand skills you've developed. Ooh, that's pretty ugly. Now I could go in and clean it up, but you get the idea. You're aiming for the symmetry and all that. Now, if I do the same thing on the back side, first of all, marking, oh, actually, let's X off the side first so that I end up with my full points. Not that that's critical at this point, but you guys understand. And then I'm going to guesstimate that if my minor axis is about like that, and I'll put my major right about there. And And so when I finish, I should end up with something like this. So I'm working on a small Cintiq. The nice thing about the big Cintiqs is they do allow you to rotate. 
which would be nice. So there's your basic cylinder. Uh, it's important to understand that the top and bottom lines do go to the vanishing point. Now one thing that's, that is worth mentioning about this is if you drop a line from the very center here, right there, this plane is actually the touch line, or you might call it the drip line. Well, no, that'd be the touch line for the um, for the cylinder. That's the, the the where it is impacting the ground. Now that does become important because later on, when you're casting shadows for it, you can use that as a quick way to fake your ellipse. All right, so that's your basic thing about drawing the ellipses. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope that works.